Hi, this is Squat, and in this video, I want to tell you about lab test basics. When you go to doctor's office, they draw your blood and they check a lot of things within your blood. The first thing is the complete blood count. All different types of blood cells. They include white blood cells, red blood cells, platelets. White blood cells have different types: T cells, B cells, etc. And when they talk about differentials, they're talking about quantifying this white blood cell types. Also, people can check your coagulation process using PT, prothrombin time. It tests the extrinsic process and also the common process. So this, the two coagulation. There's another test called PTT, prothrombin time, and it tests for the intrinsic process and the common process. So if you have a problem in both, then it's probably C that's messed up. If you have uh, one but not the other, it's the respective thing that these two tests. If they suspect there's some problem with your blood cells, then they can do peripheral blood smear, a drop of blood smeared across a dish and microscope to look if any blood cells have a weird morphology. If you have ALL, CML, these are leukemias, your blood cells can be a little bit immature. In addition to testing your blood cells, the blood test can also test for your metabolites. One of the metabolite, which is a special one, is the glucose. Glucose test is done to check if you have diabetes or any condition. So when you get blood tests back, usually you have numbers for these, right? And sometimes if it's abnormal, you get mark. Let's talk about what the mark is saying and where it's coming from. Bunch of healthy people, their white blood count distribution. So if your white blood count is within this range, then you will not get a star. Some healthy people can have lower than this range. Also, some people can have higher than that normal range and still healthy. There's another way to set this kind of a reference range used for toxins and some metabolites like folate. For example, this is all of the healthy people's folate amount. But it could be that most of these are just low in folate. They should have higher folate to have optimal health. Then you don't want to set the range to be 95% here because this is not the optimal health. But you rather want to set the optimal health line to be here. You want this to be the healthy range. Also, the toxin. You want to be able to control what the optimal ranges are depending on the thing that you're measuring. Okay, finally, let's think about uh, over-testing. This is important. If you have truly positive sick people and truly negative not sick people, and here you have a test that says problem or no problem, then you can build a table. Now, suppose you have truly positive 100 people and test says 95 of them are positive, 5 are not, then your test has 95% sensitivity. Now, suppose you tested 500 people who don't have the disease and your test said that 450 of them don't have the disease, then you have about 90% specificity and your test overdiagnosed these 50 people. Uh, they were negative, but you marked them positive. So this test seems not too bad, right? 95% sensitivity, 90% specificity. But if you test so many people, 5,000 people and 500 people, I'm up to be positive and 4,500 negative. Before, 95 out of 145 times you see positive, there is something going on in this patient. But now, it's 95 plus not 50, but 500, about 600. You get a positive results back, but one out of six of them have this problem. Before, it was 95 out of 145, but now it's one out of six. The test is becoming less and less useful because getting positive doesn't mean much. So you have to be careful not to mess up this population that you're testing because more people that's negative that you test, you are diluting the meaning of that positive result. And this intuition about how meaningful that test is is called a positive predictive value. You want to maintain this positive predictive value by not testing as many people who don't have the disease.